Hey folks, today we are going to talk about GarageBand and how to use it to complete your radio ads. So when you first open up GarageBand, you're going to get this Choose a Project window. Now GarageBand is available for free on any Apple product. Uh, this is the desktop version, which you can get for your laptop or your desktop computer. Uh, there's also a version for iPad and even sort of a mini version for your phone. Uh, they do have distinctly different um, functionality for the mobile devices, so we're going to stick mostly with the desktop version because it's a little more sort of fully functional. Um, it is free. If it's not already on your Apple computer, then you can download it from their App Store. Uh, and it is basically a simpler version of Apple's more professional grade recording software, which is called Logic, which is used widely throughout the recording industry. Um, but even though uh, GarageBand is free and it is technically a simpler version of Logic, it actually has quite a bit of functionality uh, built into it uh, and is great for a whole variety of recording projects. We're going to use it fairly simply here, um, but it can do a lot more for sure. So when you open up, like I said, you get this choose a project window. Uh, we're going to start with an empty project and you can just sort of click that from the choices and hit choose and it's going to open up the main area. Now there are different types of projects you can start. Uh, you can plug an instrument into your computer, assuming you have the appropriate hardware and connections. So you would pick this one over here if you were going to like play guitar or play piano or whatever and plug it directly into your computer and play. And there's a few uh, uh, other choices um, for creating music. Uh, like I said, you can plug an instrument in. Actually, it's this cube over here. Sorry, I chose the wrong one. Um, or you can use the, uh, you can do a built-in drummer or you can use the built-in keyboard. But we're gonna choose the one with the microphone, which is perfect for creating things like radio ads or podcasts or whatnot. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and simply hit create and that'll get us into the workspace. Now, when you first initially open the workspace, there are a number of panels available to you. So let's go over them briefly. Um, at the very top, you, of course, have your file menu with the various pull-down menus that are germane to pretty much any piece of software. Starts with the file pull-down, and then there's some specific ones uh, that relate directly to the functionality and the visual components. Then along the top of the uh, piece of software, there is a number of sort of buttons that open and close various panels. Uh, give you access to different things on the left here, uh, which we'll get into in a second. There are your typical play, pause, rewind, forward, record, uh, uh, cycle buttons that are fairly common with most audio playback tools or audio recording tools. Um, there is some uh, information about what you are building right here. Um, how many bars, how many beats, tempo. Now, if you're not musically inclined and you don't understand all these things, don't worry about it. For what we're doing, it's not super important. Uh, there is different display modes you can show. You can do just beats and time. You can do just beats. You can do just time. Um, time is super helpful for what we're recording, so that's a good thing to keep open for sure. Uh, there is a tuner fork that you can turn on, which allows you to uh, do what tuner forks do. You can have in a count in uh, as well as a metronome, which will, you know, click, click, click. Um, they are on by default. Uh, as you can see, they are purple uh, here, so they are turned on. So I always turn those off immediately because we don't need either of them for the type of work we're doing here. Uh, up here is sort of the master volume. Now there are track by track volume controls. Um, but the master volume is usually in line with your computer's overall volume setting. Next over here, you can open up the notepad, uh, which of course, if you are if you write music, uh, that comes in handy. And then there's the loops browser or the loops library, which is something that we would likely be using for this project, or at least possibly be using for this project. Now, if we look at the different panels down here, uh, the first one that's open here, which you can see the button is depressed in the upper left corner here. This is the library of sort of effects and sounds um, that you can sort of fold down and you can add to uh, various vocal tracks that you put in. Uh, you, you can give it different sorts of uh, adjustments based on the output. Uh, if you were singing a dance tune or uh, if you were narrating a book, for example, uh, that could be great for our radio ads. Uh, you can also add some specific effects, 
like distortion and reverb and you can see as you fold them down there's there's variations on that so this is a bunch of different reverbs and a bunch of different distortions you know some are fairly uh, standard um, and then others um, you know have some special effect sounding to them like this makes you sound like an alien for example so uh, these effects are things that you can apply to some of your vocals now you can turn them on before you record vocals um, but I prefer doing it that I record my vocals as clearly as possible um, and then once I have the vocal track into the software then I will add different effects or subtract different effects from there so I'm not really sort of locked into it um, but for now we're going to shut that panel off by just simply de-clicking that um, then uh, you'll see here on the left hand side is the track list now by default you get sort of a generic audio track um, but we haven't recorded anything yet, so you'll see that there's no information over here on the timing scale. Um, but by default, uh, it's, a, it's a nice track to start out with because it gives us all the tools we need to get used to. So, for example, the first button is to mute that particular track. So if you want to hear only specific tracks, you can mute one or the other. Uh, the next one here is to solo that track, which is the opposite of mute, meaning it mutes everything else that happens to be in there and leaves that track live. Um, there is input monitoring, which is uh, more of a technical tool that we're not going to use. You'll notice as I am talking that these green bars are sort of tracking my volume. So if I talk really softly, it's down here. But if I talk really loudly, it goes all the way up here to the yellow zone. And if I were to yell, which I won't do, it would go all the way up to the red here. So it's, it's basically your levels, as it were. Um, and then this is your individual volume for that track. So you can adjust the volume for that track only by using this slider. Notice it does not change the master volume. So you can adjust how loud or soft the particular track is. So for example, for your radio ads, you might want to have the audio track of the, of the vocal louder than your music, uh, and so you can adjust that in relation to each other. Uh, then the last control here is the pan button, which is sort of a left and right channel mixer. By default, the sound is centered, meaning that if you were listening on a pair of headphones, uh, the sound would be coming equally out of both uh, ears, uh, out of both cups on your headphones, as it were. Uh, of course, I'm imagining very large headphones like I had back in the 1970s, but you get the idea. Um, but you can adjust that so that the audio or the music or whatever that's coming out of this particular track leans more to the left or the right channel, as it were, because if you want to try to get certain effects. Um, like, for example, if you had a radio ad that had a conversation between two people, um, then you might want to have one of the vocal tracks lean a little more to the left and have the other vocal track lean a little bit more to the right so that when people were listening to it either on headphones or in their car, uh, you know, in a nice controlled audio setting, the conversation would sound more like the, the two people having the conversation were on opposite sides of the virtual room, as it were. So that's a good use for the, the pan uh, button on this particular project. Um, and so the other thing you can do, of course, is double click on the name of the track. It, it, GarageBand gives it default names, you know, Audio One, Guitar One, Piano One, and so on and so forth. Um, and when we get into using loops or whatnot, it will name it based on the name of the loop. And if you were to drag media files in here, it would name it based on whatever the media file name is. Um, but you can rename it just by double clicking it and you can name it whatever you want um, that makes sense for you to organize your tracks. Now again, this is a sort of blank track that comes up automatically when you first open GarageBand. Um, you can, of course, record your vocals for your radio ad directly into your computer. I would definitely recommend using uh, headphones with a microphone on them, um, like a good pair of earbuds will do the job. You know, if you don't have anything uh, particularly uh, nicer than that. But uh, if you have like a blue snowball microphone or even a good headset with a microphone that comes down in front of your mouth, that would be great. Naturally, be in a very quiet room. A lot of people record in like their closet just to, you know, muffle a lot of the sound. Um, and then the other option is you can record on your phone. Also try to find a nice quiet setting and then you can send that audio file to yourself uh, and then drop that audio file in here in GarageBand, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, okay, next, uh, down below here, this bottom panel that runs along the whole bottom, you'll see is uh, sort of more controls, more audio controls 
for whatever track happens to be active. Um, kind of like layers in Photoshop or Illustrator, you can click on the different tracks and they will turn different colors. Um, the light gray means it's the active track. Now, there's only one track in here, but if we had multiple tracks running down this panel, like layers, you'd be able to choose the one that you want to be active. And that one that's active, as you adjusted these controls down here, it would affect that. Now, you, you've got a couple of options here. If you know a little bit about sort of audio engineering, <laughs> Um, you can certainly move the dials around in ways that you understand them. Um, you can see that there are uh, a bunch of options and whatnot. Um, or you can just play around with them and see what it does. Um, some of that's obvious, uh, like a little, you can add a little reverb, you can add a little ambiance, which kind of makes it sound like it's more in a recording hall. Um, you can play around with some of the different frequencies, the low, middle, and high tones. You know, those don't require a ton of understanding of audio engineering. Just you can mess around with them and see what it does. Um, you can add a compressor to it, turning it off and on here, and then uh, adjusting the amount of compression. I would totally encourage you, if you've got some time, just to play around with it. Just see what it does to your tracks, particularly your voice recording. Um, also, these are the main controls here, and then if you hit EQ, this will show you, uh, once you have something recorded, it will show you the equalizer range uh, throughout the different lengths and frequencies. Again, if you understand audio stuff, this could be helpful. Um, you can also make the adjustments on a track-by-track -track basis. As you can see, by default, it is by track. Uh, but you can also do master adjustments for the entire composition um, once you have all your tracks in there. And notice you have less options when you're doing the master one. Um, but it gives you a chance to, again, mess around with the general sound of it. So those are your controls. Um, and if you don't want that panel open while you're sort of building your tracks, you can simply turn it off and on by hitting this button here, off and on. Uh, the, the other option for this bottom panel is the, um, the editor trap, uh, which gives you, uh, it will show you the audio wave forms, which we'll look at in a minute when we put some files in here. And you can literally go in there and do some visual editing on the waveforms, um, which is also fun to mess around with if it's the sort of thing you want to spend some time on. Okay, so we can shut that off too. And now you're really just down to your list of tracks and the time platform here. Uh, and of course, you can zoom in and out on the time platform so you can see the seconds much closer or much further away. Okay, the next thing I just want to introduce you to is loops. Um, if you click the loops collection here, GarageBand comes loaded with a whole bunch of pre-recorded instruments, sounds, sound effects, uh, even some vocals. Now, these are not, um, believe it or not, Apple actually owns a recording studio in California. And over the past, oh, I don't know, 15 years or so, they have brought in orchestras, bands, musicians, singers, and just recorded tons of audio loops that get uh, sent along with GarageBand. When new updates to GarageBand comes out, it usually comes with new loops. Uh, you might notice that not all the loops are downloaded. Like you can see here, the ones that are grayed out um, are not downloaded yet because if you downloaded every single loop on your computer, it would take up a ton of room on your computer. So certainly download the ones you want. You can download them one by one on the fly. And of course you can preview them uh, simply by uh, clicking on it here and you can hear it. bit of piano, uh, go down here, a little bit of synth, and so on and so forth. Now it is just this giant list, but you can organize them up here um, by choosing specific instrument. If I just want to hear, uh, say, electric piano, for example, I can just get all the electric piano pieces, um, and then I can just reset it by Xing out of it. If I want to get just all the electric guitars, I can do that and so on and so forth. There's a whole ton of them here. Um, and there's other ways to organize them. You can change the way you're looking at the collection. You can look at it by mood. You know, if you want to look for uh, musical loops that are, you know, uh, grooving or dark or clean. Yes, I understand those are subjective adjectives, but it does help sort of steer you down the right direction in finding it. So if I wanted to find a cheerful banjo, Uh, or, for example, uh, a dark goose acoustic guitar. I could try this one here, which I have to download. 
which might take a second or two. So we'll let that go and we'll go do something else. But anyway, you get the idea. Uh, you can search by instrument again. You can search by a genre. Um, and then, of course, you can favorite certain ones. You'll see there's a column with a heart here. So when you are looking at your collection um, of sounds, when you find the ones you really like, be sure to check off the heart box so you can get to them easily uh, by going to your favorite collection. Um, and of course, if you uh, go to different sources from different packs, because you can see they come from different uh, software packages that come with GarageBand, if you know those really well, you can go through and look at those. But anyway, there is a ton of them. Certainly explore them. You can probably find some music that you can use for your uh, commercials. However, there are other places to find music too, which we'll get to those in a little bit. Um, and if you're not clear, by the way, a, a loop is a sh relatively short piece of sound or music that begins and ends in exactly the same spot so that it can, as the name implies, be looped. You can just string them along over and over again. Um, and so they're great for building out various songs or bits of instrumentation or whatnot. Okay, so uh, next we are going to uh, get into other sources of music, and then we'll come back here and see about sort of building our radio. Uh, from GarageBand, let's look at some other sources where we can get some music uh, to use for our radio ads. So one of the stock sources we've looked at uh, is Pixabay, and uh, you know, based on the name and the way the homepage looks, it's pretty evidently a uh, stock photography website. But kind of hidden in their search feature here, if you uh, pull down, uh, aside from images like photos and illustrations and vector graphics, uh, they have video clips, uh, but they also have music and sound effects, uh, which they don't really advertise very much. So I think that's a nice hidden feature. Um, so if you're looking for music uh, to use in the background for your radio ads, or even add some sound effects maybe, depending on the type of radio ad you're doing, um, you can find them here. Now, searching for them is a little interesting because unlike images, you're searching for subject matter. Um, music's a little different as you're searching more for mood or genre. Um, so if you wanted, um, you know, a jazz type of track, for example, um, you can start typing that genre and then you'll see that there's different subgenres, jazz, upbeat, jazz, relaxing, etc. So if we wanted a upbeat jazz song, we can search that. And it takes us into their audio search library, um, which is pretty great. It's nicely put together. Um, you can see here that you can choose from the, over on the left-hand side here, there's a bunch of sorting features, including the duration of the track. Um, now, of course, in our editing software in GarageBand, we can edit the duration. But at the same time, you know, maybe it's helpful to get something uh, that is roughly in the ballpark of what you're looking for. So you have some room uh, to trim, but, you know, not too much. So you can choose the duration. Um, you can pick further uh, genre areas to sort of narrow it down further, whether it's electronic jazz or, you know, whatnot. There's a whole ton. Um, you can go by mood, um, uh, types of uh, the, the way the movement of the music is, you know, how quickly it moves along, uh, different themes. Uh, so you can certainly use all those search features. Uh, to, to narrow it down further. But of course, over here are the results, and you've got a few different things going on. You can simply uh, play it. Like that. Um, so you can get a little track of it. Uh, and then of course, you can see over here in the wave form, like where it's at. So you get a rough idea of where it is in the track. Um, you can uh, Click down here to get some more information. These, of course, are the keywords that are associated. Um, Pixabay, remember, you do have to sign in to Pixabay to use it. It's not entirely anonymous, so you know, sign in with a Google account or something. Um, but you can favorite it or bookmark it in case you like it and you want to save it for later. And, of course, you can download it directly to your computer if you want to, and then you'll have the audio track. So it just, boom, immediately goes down to your downloads folder where you can, you know, it again kind of go from there and furthermore if you click on the name of the track you can learn more information about it including uh, similar tracks uh, that are in that same ballpark so you can try out different things so you know once you're sort of happy with 
uh, what you have found, you can go from there and then you've got your background music. Uh, and then, like I said, there's also sound effects if you want to try those. So if you wanted like a phone ringing for some reason in your commercial, you can probably find something like that. Vintage phone ringing. There we go. So all sorts of great audio stuff sort of hidden in Pixabay. So that's one great resource for getting some audio that you can use. Um, the other one is YouTube, um, which is surprising to a lot of people because of course, uh, people tend to look at YouTube as either a consumption platform, where you, know, where you watch videos, v versions of television, follow your favorite people, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe you make videos for a variety of reasons um, and you know you have a channel. Well, even if you don't make a single video, um, you as soon as you make a YouTube account, uh, again, probably through a Google account, you have a channel. Um, and with that channel comes some tools, including some free audio. So here you are in YouTube signed in. This is my avatar over here. And if you go to the Your Channel button, now if you don't make content, most people don't bother checking that because they think, well, I don't make content, what do I care? Um, I make videos, I make some educational videos naturally for classes, um, but even if you don't make anything, you still have access to this landing area for your channel. And what you're looking for is the Manage Videos button, um, which allows you to manage any content you have on your site. And again, even if you don't have content, it will take you over to this new tab here. So this is all my video stuff. Um, but over here on the left hand side in the various dashboard buttons at the very, very bottom is audio library, which is a hidden collection of uh, free audio. Now I say hidden, obviously they're not really hiding it, but YouTube doesn't advertise this very much. Um, you know, uh, it took, I sort of happened upon it by accident one day. And so they also like Pixabay have music and sound effects. Um, there's really, you can't really search the stuff, but there is a, a good uh, uh, sort of way to sort. And I shouldn't say you can't search. You can, you can in fact search. Um, but it doesn't work quite the way Pixabay does. So normally what I like to do is sort of sort using um, these different areas here by sort of mood, for example. Um, so let's say I'm looking for sort of bright sounding songs. I can sort by that by simply clicking the sort feature right next to the title of the mood. And then it gives me all the bright ones on top. And then if I want them to be sort of bright and upbeat, but I want them to be uh, electronic music, for example, um, then I can hit the secondary sort and then I'll get sort of all the bright ones and all the dance like, and you can continue to sort that way. Kind of like an Excel sheet might work. And you can star the ones you like, so they'll add and up in your favorites. You see the track title. Uh, you can't really click on it and learn more about it. Um, they're, they're kind of um, just there. But you can see who the artist is who created it, and then you can learn more about that artist um, by simply clicking on their name and uh, going to the share sheet there. And if you want to see more by a particular artist, you can sort, uh, you can filter by their name too. Shows you the duration of the track and uh, you can, of course, see the licensing type. Um, and the licensing type is kind of the same for all the audio on YouTube. It basically says you can use this audio track in any of your videos, including videos that you monetize. No attribution is required. So basically, these are even uh, these are entirely free to use and are even more open-ended than Creative Commons stuff in that you can use it to make money, whereas a lot of the Creative Commons stuff is entirely free to use, um, but you can't use it to make money. Um, so th these are all completely free to use. And so you can preview them, just listen to them. So to see what you like, kind of go from there, you know, and then when you find the one you like, you go over here to the right and you hit the old download button and it will drop it into your downloads. So now I got a couple of nice tracks that I could possibly use for my radio commercial. So I'm going to show you how to quickly put together your radio ads just using some of the simple features in GarageBand. Uh, GarageBand, as we mentioned earlier, has a bunch of complex features. Um, it's really a, a easier version of uh, Logic. Um, and we're not going to get too deep into a lot of the features, but I'm just going to show you a real easy way to sort of uh, put this together. Um, so over here in this folder, I have my two bits of audio. I have a song uh, that I downloaded. Uh, from one of the sources we looked at, this one here. So 
So that's going to be the background. And then I have the vocal. So what I did is I just uh, I did a reading uh, on my phone uh, using the voice recorder on my phone. Pretty straightforward. Um, of me reading one of the scripts that I gave you guys, uh, one of the sample scripts that uh, was in uh, Canvas. Uh, so I have me recording that, and it's not edited or altered or anything. It's just you know, me reading in a relatively quiet room. So th this is that. There you go. So it's like uh, you're listening to a recording of me, listening to a recording of me. It's like Inception. Um, so once you've got your audio tracks, the nice thing about GarageBand is it's pretty much drag and drop. Now, we talked a, lot, a little earlier about how... Uh, when you first open up a GarageBand project, um, you get this sort of placeholder track here, just audio one. Um, but uh, we're going to drag in our audio features here, our audio bits, and then uh, we're going to get rid of the, the placeholder one. So uh, be sure to, of course, save your project as something. Uh, so we'll do that here because uh, it just automatically saves it as untitled and it's really easy to get sort of rolling on the project uh, and not really... Uh, save it so we'll be sure to do that so I'll put that in here and let's just call it radio ad um, and this is a 30 second so I'm just gonna radio ad underscore 30 save okay got my project saved all right so now just drag and drop so I'm gonna start by taking the voice track that I recorded just drag it over here into GarageBand and you'll see as soon as you drag it into sort of the work area it lights up blue and then drops it into place, and then boom, makes a wave form out of it, uh, which is great. So now that I have this new track, um, and remember I told you, you select the tracks to make them active. They turn a lighter shade of gray in the track list over here. Um, the first one, that default one that GarageBand gives you, you can right click on it and just simply delete that track because um, we don't really need it. Um, so now uh, we have the voice track that we're gonna be working with. And a couple things to pay attention to here is sort of how you make your way through an audio track. So the, um, uh, the, the, the measurements up here at the top are showing you sort of where you are in the track. And then of course, uh, we can change that based on what we're viewing up here. So I'm just gonna go by time. Um, because I'm not really making music, I'm doing a commercial, so I'm more interested in how long the thing is. Um, and so I need 30 seconds, and so the voice recording uh, is almost exactly 30 seconds, but um, it, it, require, it also includes some dead space. Um, now if we zoom in a little bit here, let's grab the volume, make sure that's right. Okay, we got that good there. Uh, so if we zoom in a little bit here on the track, make it a little bigger so I can see. Let me shut the loops library so we can uh, zoom in even further here. All right, so let's get a good look at this waveform. So if you're not familiar with waveforms, it is sort of a visual representation of audio information. Um, it's basically a data visualization. Um, and so similar to sort of like a uh, sort of a cardio uh, monitor in a hospital showing the beats of your heart. This is showing the sounds coming out of this particular track. So when there is a flat line, it basically means that there is um, uh, dead air, it's quiet. Um, and so yes, this is 30 seconds, but I've got some dead air at the beginning because normally when you record audio, you kind of pause for a second before you get rolling. And then of course I have some dead air at the end. So it's not exactly 30 seconds. Now, let's talk about sort of the anatomy of this um, waveform. All you really need to understand is kind of where the bits and bobs are for the sounds. So anytime you see a line that goes flat or almost flat, it's quiet space, right? It's a pause, um, it's a break in the action, um, it's a quieter tone. And then of course, as the waveforms get larger uh, vertically, that you're being louder. Um, and so this helps you sort of understand where to edit. Now there are some control buttons that pop up as you hover over the left and right sides of the track waveform here. And this one here in the lower left allows you to extend it uh, in one direction uh, or the other. Um, uh, but more than likely you would pull it inwards because of course we're trying to edit what's here. Now of course we can go back in the other direction and 
uh, put back what we've taken out, and I'll show you that in a second. And then the other button in the top right, which you'll notice there is not one in the top left, uh, is to loop it, meaning to continue it. It would start again at the beginning point and continue. And so you can make a loop of it if you wanted to play it over and over again. Now, for my voice recording, that's not super helpful. But if I was, you know, if I recorded a, uh, a sound on a guitar or on a piano and I wanted to make it a loop, then I could do it that way by simply pulling it outwards and it would loop it further. But for editing it, to get rid of that dead air at the beginning, I can click on this lower left button and pull it inwards. And you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm trimming the track. I'm getting rid of the quiet space. Now, you don't want to get rid of all of it because it's tough to sort of um, start exactly where the voice starts. And you'll see that there is, of course, you know, the numbers are changing on the length and whatnot. And the area that I'm trimming is turning gray and the area of the audio track that is active remains blue. Um, so you want to kind of pull it in tight and leave as little bit of quiet space as possible on there. So you let that go and then that should be good. Now, let's talk about the playhead for a minute. So along the second meter at the top, uh, slightly below that, you'll see that there is this sort of upside down triangle with a vertical line. That's your playhead. And that allows you to move anywhere in the track. And of course, once you do that and you hit play up here in the controls, that's where it will begin. Also, you can use the space bar on your keyboard to play and pause any track. So let's play it from here and just sort of see how it sounds without any dead air at the beginning. So that's pretty good. Starts right like a, a fraction of a second before I start talking. So you don't get a lot of dead air. You don't get me breathing in or anything like that. So that's good. Now, if you have any mistakes or hiccups, you can listen to them and you can trim them out. If you want to add a larger pause, you can do that. Um, I'll show you how to do that um, in a second here. So, but first you got to listen through the whole track. So I'm just, I'm not going to make you listen through the whole track at this point, but if I move the playhead here and then play it here, I want to sort of investigate what's going on uh, right here in this spot. So let's do that. Okay. So that was a very brief pause. Sounds good. But let's say... Uh, the breath I took in was too loud and I wanted to get rid of it, or if I made too long of a pause, you can trim that out by simply placing the playhead in the area you want to trim out. You can hover over the uh, play bar there and right click on it. And uh, you can you can split at the playhead, which means you can trim the uh, audio sound into two separate sounds. Now you can pick these up by grabbing the blue bar here and move it over a little bit. So now I've separated them. So let's say I wanted a longer pause. Uh, I can simply start here. Okay, so I extended the pause. Now that wasn't beautiful because you could sort of hear me breathing downwards there. But you can play around with them until you get it just in the right spot. And remember, you can zoom in further on the waveform if you really want to you know fine-tune what's going on here you can see more of it so you could trim it in different places so maybe if we split it here and then there's that little breath uh, with that highlighted I can hit the delete key on my keyboard get rid of it pick this up bring it back in a little bit and get rid of this little section here and then go ahead now let's try it Try that again. Okay, so, you know, not perfect, but you could continue to play around with it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, playing around with the areas in the recording like we're doing here, unless you know for a fact there's something you want to cut out, like a mistake or you pause too long or whatever. But that's just a show to show you how to do it. All right, now I'm going to do Command Z or Control Z on your keyboard to undo everything I just did to put it back because actually this is a, a pretty good one take recording and there's really not anything I want to trim out. Okay, now let's go to the end. So if we go down to the end, we've got to get rid of that dead space at the end. So we'll slide on over here. And again, similarly, let's listen to how it ends and then we can decide where to trim it. Okay, so as soon as we hit the end of that, we want to trim this in. So we'll pull that in to about here. It's pretty good, and then go. Perfect. 
All right, so that all sounds great. Now, of course, the next thing you want to do is decide where in your 30 seconds is your voice going to start. Because if we zoom back here, I can pick up this audio track and move it anywhere in the, in the timeline here, in the track. Um, and so this is just sort of blank space. So, you know, do you want the voice to start immediately? Do you want it to start further on? But, of course, you can't really decide until you drag in your music and sort of see where you want that to hit. And I'm just paying attention to where the 30 second mark is here. Um, so if this is my 30 second mark, then of course I'm gonna have a little space here, a little space here, I just have to sort of decide where inside that 30 seconds do I want the voice to happen. So let's grab the music, because that'll certainly help us decide, is the music. Now the music is a two minute track, I don't need all of it for sure. But we'll grab that, drop that in, give it a second. So now that's in there, great, we'll deal with that in a second. Now one thing we haven't done is we have not renamed our tracks. Um, you don't have to necessarily, but remember you can just by simply double clicking on them just to help you keep organized. But I'm going to go drop the track in here, the audio track, put it all the way to the beginning and put the playhead all the way at the beginning. And if you don't know where the playhead is, let's say it's kind of gone off screen and you've lost track of it and you can't find it, you can always use uh, this button here to go all the way back to the beginning and that'll find you the playhead so it's always back at the beginning. All right, let's play this. Okay, so two problems there, right? Number one, the audio on the music is way too loud because it's drowning out the uh, the vocal, so that we gotta fix. And there's a little bit of dead space at the beginning of the song, and we want it to start pretty much straight off, right? So we'll use this tool here, and we'll pull that in. So the song starts a little quicker, and we'll put this back, and put that all the way there, again. Okay, that's much better. All right, so now we're looking for like the 30 second mark. So the song is going to end roughly around here. We'll deal with that later. But we got to lower the volume on the song. Remember, you have individual volume controls on each track. Uh, your master volume is up here. Uh, I usually keep the master volume about three quarters of the way up. And then I'm going to lower the track on the music. So that's sort of behind the voice. We'll go put that. Okay, so that's a little better. And we can keep playing with the volume on the music. Now I'm gonna mute the vocals for a second. I'm gonna mute that because I kinda wanna just listen to the song and find where a good spot's gonna be for the vocals to come in somewhere in this ballpark over here. Okay, so you've got that intro guitar and then the secondary guitar shows up, right? And you can see the two uh, audio waves here indicating those two dueling guitars as it were. So you can hear it just goes on and on and on, right? Okay, then you've got the steel guitar comes in around there. Okay, that's another change right here, a little more plucking style. So you can really analyze your audio and decide like, where do I want this to start? What's that going to sound like? Um, and you can obviously cut out the beginning, cut out the end, cut out the middle, and you know, sort of fine tune it the way you want it. So we're going to go with this. somewhere around there and we'll look for a good spot to start this all right so I'll do a little bit of trimming and we'll come back and we'll sort of see where length we're of the audio track I did a little bit of trimming I actually started it in a different place than the song came in originally um, lined up the vocal track so that it comes in and ends where I want and we're all within 30 seconds now there's still a few more things to do here to fine-tune it but let's just hear what it sounds like coming in and coming out from here
Okay. So the lineup sounds good. Now we do have a couple of problems. We need to uh, do something with the end of the audio, which just kind of bluntly comes to an end. We want it to kind of fade off a little bit so we can work on that. Um, I like that the beginning sort of starts uh, abruptly. That's good. That was kind of the whole point of that. Um, but the audio, the vocal can be enhanced a little bit. Uh, and we've got some of these tools. We've got these guys uh, over here, remember? Uh, we can go over here to the library and we've got our controls at the bottom here. So between these two things, we can select the voice track, make sure that's the one selected, right? It's gonna be highlighted gray. Um, and we can go over and play around with some, uh, some voice uh, adjustments. Uh, we can play around with some effects, uh, some distortion and reverb, um, or we can simply sort of do it manually down here uh, by using these uh, EQ controls uh, to add a little bit of ambience and reverb and just sort of see what it sounds like. Um, so you can add that to the whole track once, once you have your track selected and then play it back and see what you like. Um, okay, so I played around a little bit with the uh, voice recording here and tried a little ambience, tried a little reverb. I uh, went over here to some of the preset uh, filters you can put on there and honestly wasn't really crazy about any of it. So I did play around with the volume a little bit to uh, get it to be uh, quite a bit above the music. Um, and so now we're going to try doing some fading because uh, as you recall the music starts abruptly like this, which is good, but it ends abruptly like this, which is not good. So we want to be able to fade that out. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, you just turn on what is called automation and it gives you a visual uh, way of reducing the volume or fading it down. So let me zoom in a little bit here and we'll take a look. Okay, so up here above your tracks, uh, you might see two buttons here. Uh, this one is catch playhead and this one is show hide automation. Now, if you don't have this button, show hide automation, because it doesn't always show up if you haven't used it before, you're gonna go up here to the file menu, go to mix and click on show automation and then that will make that button appear. And then once that button appears, you can simply turn it on and you'll see that the tracks look a little bit differently. And so uh, the automation becomes a uh, pull down menu uh, and it defaults to volume. You can also automate other things in GarageBand too, panning, echo, reverb. You can have that stuff sort of come in and out during certain times, but all we really care about right now is volume. So the volume for the voice recording, we're gonna keep steady throughout and just use the main volume slider for that. But for the background music, we wanna have that kind of start out louder, get softer uh, when we start talking and then fade out completely at the end here. So if you see this yellow horizontal line, that represents sort of a visual representation of the volume. And of course, if I were to raise the volume, you'll see that the yellow bar goes up. Um, and I can raise it all the way to the top and all the way to the down. So I had the volume set somewhere around here. So that's about right. Now I wanna have uh, the volume sort of start out a little bit louder. So I'm gonna move the playhead over here a little bit to reveal these sort of yellow balls here at the end. These are transitional points, these change the volume. So we had it steady all the way through, but to change it, all you've gotta do is um, you're gonna make some contact points by holding down the command key on your keyboard and you'll see that your cursor becomes this little pen. Um, so I'm gonna click on the pen here and make a new yellow ball. And then this allows me to pick up the first one and raise the volume of the track to about here. So it'll start out nice and loud. And then we're gonna go ahead and drag this ball over at the lower volume to when I start speaking here at the top. So it lines up at the beginning of the voiceover. So what'll happen is the music track will start out louder and then get softer just as the voice starts. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so pretty good. Started out louder, came down. Now you can play around with it. I'm actually gonna increase the volume at the beginning a little bit and I'm gonna decrease the overall volume a little bit because that was a little louder than I wanted it to be. Okay, so let's try that one more time, see how that goes. 
Okay, that's better. Nice and smooth transition. Stats out nice and loud. Gets people's attention and kind of fades down. Now let's get to the end of the radio ad. Now here, of course, once I finish talking, you want the volume to come back up again. So, and then sort of fade out. Uh, or it can just fade out directly. It doesn't necessarily have to come back up again. So we're going to line up the playhead with the end of the... Uh, with the end of the speaking part here, and then we'll hold down the command key, flip this over to a pen, and go ahead and make a dot. So that indicates the end of the speaking track right there. And then go ahead and make another dot. So now we've got two control points, and I can grab the second one and just drag it down and outwards and sort of fade the audio on the, on the soundtrack all the way out down to zero right at the 30 second mark. So you can see that that lines up pretty much with the 30 second mark, which is great. So it should fade right out. So let's see what that sounds like. There you go. Now we can extend it a little longer, right? So even though the track is 30 seconds, we can uh, give it a little extra length. Just kind of pull it out a little more. Notice I shut off the automation. So I'm like a little smidge over 30 seconds. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the fade to be a little more gradual. And then, of course, you know, when it goes to the radio station, they'll probably cut it at that point. So a little smidge past 30 and go. There we go. Nice. All right. So let's hear the whole thing in its entirety. And we should be pretty good. Now, of course, you can add more tracks. You can add sound effects, you can have multiple vocals, but this is sort of the basics of it, is your vocal track, your music track, and then anything else you want. Um, we can shut off the automation feature so we don't have to look at that. And we can go all the way through. And this gives us our basic radio ad. Of course, be sure to hit save as you go along too. So there you have it, a radio ad in GarageBand, pretty simply done. Two tracks, not too difficult. So hopefully that helps, and you guys uh, have a good time making it. Thanks.